the winner who gets to keep it on and advance to the Super Six is... This is big. Popcorn! Oh! Popcorn, congratulations! Dancers, let's help the owls out of their egg. What? Oh! Mr. Robin Thicke, yes. your first impression guest was Amy Grant and Vince Gill. Sticking with it? Absolutely. Jenny, you said Maureen McCormick and Barry Williams. Amy and Vince. Yeah. Dr. Kenny Ken Ken. Oh, so I don't even. First don't impression guest, Derek and Julianne Huff. Danny DeVito and Rhea Perlman. He's like, <laughs> oh my God! What did you say, Nicole? Donnie and Marie. That's not bad. Clint Black and Lisa Hartman. Oh my oh. God! Harry Hamlin and Lisa Renner. Deal with it. Whoa! Oh. Take it off. Take it off. Take it off. A country power couple was revealed on The Masked Singer. But in this week's episode, we discuss our favorite performances, we debate Kyle's jellyfish prediction, and a character, or should I say my favorite vegetable, is revealed, the broccoli. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Mel. And I'm Kyle. And welcome to the Talent Recap Show. All right, you guys, it was yet another great week on The Masked Singer, but it was a first this week. We had our first ever double reveal, and of course, it was the Group A Finals. Now, Kyle, let us know who was revealed on this week's episode. Yes, so like you mentioned, a double reveal. We had the Snow Owls, and they were revealed to be Clint Black and Lisa Hartman Black. Now, Kyle, I know you are happy because once again, you have exposed the Snow Owls as the two, and you were correct. How are you feeling right now? Feels good, Mel. <laughs> I hope you keep that feeling because a lot of people saying your winning end, your winning streak is about to come to an end. But we'll get into that at the later in the episode because, Kyle, I mean, a lot of people are disagreeing with your last expose. But let's get into this week's episode. All right. Group A, we had Snow Owls, Sun, and then we also had Popcorn. They all had great performances. But, of course, every week someone has to go. But you know what? I think we should talk about our favorite performances, Kyle. Who was your favorite performance this week? Yeah, like you had mentioned, there were so many strong performances because we're getting to the point in the competition where everyone left is pretty good. But my favorite performance this week was The Sun singing Peace of My Heart by Janis Joplin. Listen, I have to agree with you. This was also a favorite performance of mine. And The Sun is clearly a singer. Like, she's not, she's yeah. not hiding it. She's a pro. I mean, she did impeccable. Yeah, and there's a reason why she didn't end up in the SmackDown. I thought her performance was great. You know, I think every week we see the Sun perform, she's a standout performer and someone who I think will make it really far. I mean, she's already made it to the Super Six, which is, you know, going to be the semifinals. And I think she's a contender to win it all this season. Honestly, early prediction, you guys. I have to agree with you, Kyle. She's giving winner vibes. From that one performance, we didn't even need anyone else to know that she was going to be the one to make it and not have to go through the SmackDown. Speaking of SmackDown, mm -hmm. we have to mention the SmackDown is back, you guys. Kyle, I love when the SmackDown is part of the Masked Singer because it brings that like battle feeling again. It's really cool to see. Yeah, I think it's really fun to see them go head to head. And, you know, it's it's less about like, oh, let's just watch all these performances and eliminate one. It really feels like more of a battle. So I think that brings a different element to the show. And I think it, it's a really fun part, especially at this point where everyone's pretty good. Yeah, and then, of course, we have the battle of the corny puns. That's really what the SmackDown <laughs> is with Popcorn saying she's ready to pop. Okay, girl. Do <laughs> yep. you? <laughs> I mean... Popcorn came here to pop. <laughs> <laughs> That's as gangster as it's going to get, Nisha. But I'll get into my favorite performance of the week. My favorite the, uh, performance of the week was Popcorn singing Everything I Do. Listen, I love that song. Again, one of my favorite karaoke songs in the karaoke bars <laughs> when, any, when anybody sings it. But her voice was just so pleasant and pure. It was a beautiful performance to watch. Yeah, I think Popcorn really surprised me this week. You know, I think going into it, I was like, okay, Popcorn's getting eliminated. It'll be, you know, Snow Owls and Sun in the Super Six. 
And she really came and sang to win, and, and I think she deserved it. You know, I thought her knockout perform or her SmackDown performance, like you had mentioned, was definitely worth moving on to the Super Six, especially because I don't think that the Snow Owls particularly had a strong week this week, which I think also contributed to them going home. I totally agree with you. Now, one thing I do want to say, I found it interesting how one of her clues was that she said that her name was mentioned already by the judges. So she kind of just gave us, like, broke it down to a few people it could be. And Kyle, interestingly enough, is who you predicted her as. Now, I'm not going to say it on this episode. Make sure you guys watch a few episodes back and see who Kyle revealed her as. But you know what? You might hit it on the nail with this one. Yeah, and I think another thing is, you know, we see a lot of predictions online of of who Popcorn is. And, you know, the one that we predicted is definitely one of them. But there are others that are really strong contenders as well. But if you watch our video, you see all the clues that tell you why who we predicted Popcorn is, is who we say it is. Speaking of predictions, I think it's time for everyone's favorite segment of the week. Kyle, it's time for you to expose yet another character on The Masked Singer. And Kyle, who will you be exposing? Let's do it. This week, we are going to expose the broccoli. Broccoli? Okay, this is one of my favorites on the show because I just really want to know who he is at this point. <laughs> and Kyle, let's just go into it. The broccoli is none other than... Drum roll. Drum roll. Paul Anka. Kyle, who is that? I have no <laughs> you idea. know, that's a good question. I had honestly not heard of him before this, but he is a Canadian uh, singer and songwriter, and he worked really closely with Frank Sinatra, which is where a lot of the clues come in. So let's go through and talk about everything that points to Broccoli being Paul Anka. Please do, because, yeah, all I right. have no idea. <laughs> First of all, we see all these TikTok clues, and there's a remix of one of his songs, Put Your Head on My Shoulder, that is used in a lot of YouTube or in, in a lot of TikTok videos. Uh, he also has posted videos on his own Instagram uh, of calling it TikTok Tuesdays. Uh, so he definitely has it in there, even though it kind of alludes to him being someone younger, right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Yeah, and Paul Anka is like 79 years old. So not exactly younger, but still in on the TikTok trend. Uh, next, we saw a can of soup, and he talked about how a contest started his career. And uh, Paul Anka, uh, I, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it, so I'm kind of, I'm, if I'm changing it every time, I, I apologize. But Paul Anka... <laughs> spent three months collecting soup can labels to win a trip to New York, and he said that's what inspired him to like really pursue wow. music as a career. Yep. We also saw a treehouse in his first set of clues, and he appeared on the Treehouse of Horror episode of The Simpsons. Uh, we also saw a, a piece of paper that had the numbers 37265 written on them, which Jenny actually decoded to spell Frank, and again, as I mentioned, he's worked a lot with Frank Sinatra. Uh, so that's the clue there. And then he also told this whole story uh, about, um, you know, how he stayed up all night figuring out this song and then got all, got all excited about it. And that's when he called the, the number, which is the one that we just interpreted to mean Frank. And that all is a story about My Way, uh, Frank, one of Frank Sinatra's biggest songs that Paul Inca actually rewrote the lyrics for him. This is it. It's his last album. He's finished. He's out. He's going. And it hit me. And now the end is near. The final curtain. And I said, what would Frank do with this if he were writing it? And metaphorically, I started creating this song as if Frank were writing it. I didn't start writing until 5 in the morning. But when I was finished, I had something that I knew was special. The phone rings. Mr. Sinatra on the phone. He says, kid, listen to this. Took the phone. Put it up to the speaker. I heard my way for the first time. I started crying. Uh, we also saw a mariachi band in one of the clues. And uh, Palenka has the song called A Mi Manera, which again, I'm, I'm definitely pronouncing wrong. But it's a Spanish song that's, uh, that was recorded by him. And it's done a lot by mariachi bands. Uh, and then in the last set of clues we saw about him, we saw the number 900. And Paul has written over 900 songs. And tonight I hated you because I wished I'd written all the songs you wrote. Bravo. So that's kind of where that number comes from. We also saw an anchor, which I think is allusion to his last name, Anka. Oh, okay. And then we saw a clue where a roulette wheel was on the black 26. 
And August 26th is Paul Inca Day in Ottawa, which is where he's from. Again, he's Canadian. He has a whole day for himself. Okay. <laughs> Kyle, you did. I so know. So amazing. apparently he's a big deal. We just didn't realize it. Yeah, I think maybe it's just because we're here in the U.S. And yeah, I don't know. I've never heard of him personally, but I will <laughs> say those clues seem to add up. Let us know in the comments. Wait, do you have any more clues, Kyle, or are you all good? That's it. And then if you listen to the voice, I mean, I think the voice is spot on. I was going to say, I love how there's always been the TikTok references, but we can tell it's clearly an older guy. So I love how they kind of like threw that little curveball. Yeah. But anyways, you guys, let us know in the comments below. Do you agree with Kyle? Do you think he is completely wrong? But Kyle, you know, I know that we always say that when you expose someone, it's everyone's favorite segment of the show. But I think this week, my personal favorite segment of the show is going to be our comment of the week. So every week we choose one of your comments from a previous video and shout you guys out, love and or hate, because we love you guys. Kyle, you got some hate coming your way. I'm just letting you know right now. It comes from Chi Dam, who says your first wrong reveal. It is Chloe Kim. There's a lot of clues of cold and carving, which is obviously pertaining to snowboarding. Also, I heard in a podcast, her dad used to drive her to all her snowboarding events, and she ending up thanking her dad by calling him Papa J which his name is Jong. Kyle, you know, I have, to, I have to apply some pressure to you right now. You did make your expos last week, and it was last week, and it was not Chloe Kim. How are you feeling a couple of days later when everyone is saying you're wrong? If you look in the comments below, a lot of people are disagreeing with you for the first time in ever in YouTube, the Mass Singer recap history. A lot of people are disagreeing with you. So last week I predicted that the jellyfish was Michaela Maroney, U.S. gymnast, Olympic gold medalist. And yeah, a lot of people are giving feedback that they think that it's Chloe Kim, who is also an Olympic gold medalist. And, you know, I do a lot of research going into this. There are a lot of clues that line up to both of them. So I think only time will tell. I mentioned last week, though, this isn't one of the most confident predictions I've done. So I love to hear all the feedback and who knows, maybe we could be in order for the first ever prediction exposing take back <laughs> of our show's history. But stay tuned. For now, I'm sticking with my guest, Michaela Maroney for Jellyfish. And some people in the comments agree with me too. Let it be known. Are we going to have like a, the Mass Singer recap exposed like recount or something? Is this what we're going <laughs> to end up happening, Kyle? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, need, we need a recap. Uh, uh, by hand, we just have to make sure everything's in order. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you're still sticking to your guns. And you know what? <laughs> we'll see. You're right. Time will tell all. We have to wait and see what that reveal is. I feel like that is going to be one of the biggest reveals of the season. You guys, let us know in the comments below. Who else do you want to see exposed? How are you feeling about this week's episode? Are you happy that the Smackdowns are back? I certainly am. Listen, Kyle is sticking to his predictions and his exposes, so let us know in the comments below if you're riding with Kyle like I am or you're a little shaky, all right, you guys? But <laughs> I think it's time for us to wrap it up. Kyle, let everybody know where they can find you on social. Yeah, it's Kmont Pleasure on Instagram and Twitter. And you could find me at double underscore M-E-L-B-A-E. -E. And you know what? Make sure you're following Talent Recap. Most importantly, we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everything youtube you're on it right now at talent recap on all social platforms make sure you click the subscribe and follow button and i think it's time for us to say and that's our talent recap hey what are you doing tonight well i think you should hit that subscribe button down below and then we can talk